I'll, uh, a nil nil draw with Harrogate Town on Bank Holiday Monday to stop the run of two successive defeats. Uh, what was your opinion on that game? Um, listen, we, we spoke about them showing, I suppose, some character, some pride, some belief. Really pleased with the first half. Um, disappointed with the second half in terms of our performance because um, we spoke about being adaptable and not expecting the, the first half to be the same as the second. And we we, we got away with it a little bit. But like I say, the, for me, today was around a, a reaction, um, and I can't fault them for that. I, I wouldn't fault them, but certainly got to, we've got to be better than we were in, in the second half when when teams press against us our decision making um, needs to be better um, because like I say in the first half I was after the first 10 minutes when we were a bit edgy I was pleased with with with, with our movements um, we just didn't stick the ball in the back of the net and uh, that's something that has been like I say a, an issue from the, from the start of the season really as you're saying obviously the first half was um, much better than the last two games it's something you've been saying starts is to uh, sort of put, put, put home the importance of, of taking chances while you're on top and, and making the most of uh, good goals in games. I think first of all you've got to create chances. Um, I think when you're not as free-flowing as you like, there's always going to be a, a tendency to, to snatch a little bit. I think if you give Cosy his chance, probably seven times out of ten he scores, um, whereas he's a bit, I suppose, nervy and just smashes it at the keeper. It's a good save, but like I say, I don't think he should have an opportunity to save it. Rowey, with his volley, again, if he's scoring goals, then that, he scores that. Well, for him, you could probably take it further than that, but probably eight times out of ten. Or at least he hits the target eight times out of ten, but he, he slashes at it. Um, and there were, like I say, there were, there were other other good bits. We just we need to be, I suppose, more more composed um, when we are creating chances. Like I said, the, the biggest concern was the fact that Saturday which was different, but prior to that we'd not been creating lots and lots of chances. Second half, we, we became, they ultimately changed, they went a little bit higher against us. Ultimately then the space is in behind, we've got to be football intelligence wise clever enough to, to, to recognise that and, and at times play a little bit longer, whereas there's a tendency to do what we were doing first half but 40 yards deeper and that for me again as a, as a manager and as a I suppose a former defender there's big danger signs around that because not once in the first half did Nick Orton pick the ball up in our half of the pitch whereas probably within five minutes of the second half he'd given the ball away three times in our half of the pitch when, when it, where he was receiving it and as centre backs we shouldn't be playing the ball in there highlighted with the fact that the goal was, was disallowed because we shouldn't be rolling the ball into midfield there they, that, that's not something that's um, I suppose from from our perspective and the stuff we work on, that's not something we, something we work on. Um, people have made, like I say, poor decisions and we've got away with it. Uh, you briefly touched on it there, the disallowed goal for Harrogate. What was your opinion on that? Not a clue. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Um, the, 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 my opinion on it from me is the fact that we've got the ball from the back, we've rolled the ball into midfield into a marked player. We've then dallied on it when, like I say, the pressing against us, that ball should be touched out of our feet and should be played forward. Should be played for whether that's dropped into a striker, whether that's put in a channel behind, whether it's dropped into a wide play, it should be played forward. There's no there's no reward for drop for, for, for rolling the ball into a, a midfielder. The only time, like I say, we'll we'll be an, or I'll be an advocate of that will be if the midfield player can turn or if we have to use him to, to be a balance out to the other side. If not, like, like I say, that's not that's not something that we um, that we're actively saying, yeah, go on, or actively encouraging. Um, so that's the the disappointment. It's Kyle on this occasion, and he's done he's done really well. He's done really really well, and that could be a moment that ultimately, in his, on his debut, for all the good he's done, could be remembered for making a mistake there, and the ball ends up in, in our goal, and we lose the game one 0 um, So he needs to like say, he needs to learn from it quickly. But he's not the only guilty one. Like I say, Burner, who's got lots of experience, was as guilty second half when we need to be playing forward more and earning the right and getting ourselves further up the pitch, further away from our goal and closer to their goal in order for us to create chances. We've not had a shot on target second half. Um, and the only shots off target we've had have been from sort of set piece, uh, set piece situations, which highlights where the game was played. A uh, new face in the coast uh, scene this week is uh, Elton Nguatalo signed uh, after a spell at Dundee. He's a former player at uh, Kidderminster Harriers against us a few years ago. What do you think he can he can bring to the side? 
Um, well, it's creativity, but that's in order. Well, that's essential that we get him on the ball in the right areas. I think midfield-wise, the balance again has been. I've not been overly pleased with it um, in terms of the creativity we've had and the type of players we, that we've got that can can do a job in there. He's another midfielder, to, uh, an out and out midfielder that adds to adds to the mix, if you like. Um, even with him, he's got again. It's a, it's a difficult one because you throw him on because he is a, a midfielder, and we probably need another body in there. But in fairness, he's trained with us a couple of times, so it will it will take time for him to I suppose recognise what we're trying to do. We'll have to learn quickly. Um, but with the other little niggles we've got at the moment, he's obviously been thrust into the the match day squad and got a, got an opportunity. But um, he's he's I don't know how much he's done pre season. I know he was in with with a team and nothing happened there. Um, and like I say, he'll be take a little bit of time. But the way things are, we need everybody involved at the moment because we've got like I say a few a few injuries. Um, obviously a suspension on on, on Saturday. Um, so we need we need we need players. Uh, looking ahead to next week, Bramley away, a team that are joint top of the league at the moment. What sort, sort of a, a game you're expecting against them next week? And can you sort of give us a bit of an update in terms of injuries and, and uh, players ruled out for next week? Um, I, I expect a really tough game um, because, like I say, they, I think they recruited well in the summer. 3G pitch, which is another another challenge. Um, uh, ultimately, at the moment, like I say, my concern is about us and, uh, and us dealing with with, with us. Um, we again, we need to look at things with, obviously, with Lewis um, at the end there. Whether he's pulled his thigh or hopefully it's a little bit of a little bit of cramping up, we, we, we need to we need to look at. Um, Philly um, wasn't involved today. He had a, a whack on the foot on. Uh, on Saturday, had a, uh, an X-ray. It's fine, but it's obviously a soft tissue injury, which is a bit sore. Hopefully, he'll, he'll train on on Thursday. Dan Bradley still hasn't recovered from the the knee that um, that he got in the um, in the calf from the, from the game he had against against Woking. Um, and aside from that, fitness-wise, we're all right. Luke Burke's name has been circulated, um, and, and he's been made available um, to, to, to move on for things that have, again, been going on that we haven't been been happy about, um, and that's the situation with him. Like I say, we're, we're a little bit short on numbers, and I've, I've said this I've said this before. It's always going to be we recruited, in my opinion, we recruited well in the summer. Um, you, you obviously then have to see how the season starts and, and make decisions around where we can where we can improve and where we potentially need to have different options for us to play in a different way because we've we've faced different challenges this year whether it be with with teams sat in whether it be teams pressing against us and being uh, being on the front foot um, like I say we've got to be a little bit more more adaptable and, and also we make decisions around players and and give ourselves more options so hopefully we can get um, some in before. Before the weekend, but we've said before it's not it's not that easy, it's about getting the right ones in, but we'll see where see where we're at. Thanks, Joe.